some shit. But oh, I don't Google me. It'd be fucking frightening. <laughs> anyway, they they have orgies. And I'm like, oh, why are you happy? Like, you know, Let it snow. <laughs> Do you know why we're phoning? And I went, could be a number of things, love. <laughs> and I said to the police woman, I said, if you can tell me why, I would spray myself in a pesticide weed killer. <laughs> Sweet up, <laughs> break out the red panties. We're celebrating tonight. Question. It's like, put that up to you now. And then we'll just keep talking. Have we started already? Right? <laughs> yeah. We'll just roll into yeah, this. We can, we, are you good, are you we can do your... our own intros and shit, yeah. can't we? Yeah. We right. can just, we'll just yeah. share ours. You All get right. your own. All right then, uh, you put me on the, put me on the spot now. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it was all right until yeah. till we turned everything on. Yeah, the key started getting chucked about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying, um, like that's genuinely the most common asked um, thing now. It's like, oh, how's your sheep? How's your sheep? How's your sheep? And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna shoot the fucking things. I'm gonna have to shoot them. Yeah, because just yeah. Even st- I don't eat lamb anymore since I bought sheep. I like I can't eat. I can't eat lamb. I used to love lamb. How can you look your sheep in the eye exactly and then have lamb the thing, for tea? Yeah. And my niece, it, she's a real little diva actually, because she, um, one of them rammed her because they're quite aggressive actually. And one of them like rammed her in the leg a while ago, and she looked at it in the eye and she went, "I ate your baby at lunch." <laughs> and I'm like, "Mate, you can't say that." Like, you know, my poor sheep. They know what they're. They know what they're going on about. You know? Just know where they are in the the, yeah. uh, the food chain. Food you know chain. where we are in the food chain. Horrible. Like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Off Track. Welcome to uh, Brands Hatch. Uh, this is fantastic. We've started already, as you can tell. Uh, my partner in crime, as usual, Ben Curry. But delighted to say, the Bennett's British Super, Bennett's British Superbike Championship leader, Beer Monster Ducati PBM, Tommy Bridewell. Thank you. Right, that straight was a, off a yeah. triple, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. straight <laughs> off a triple. We've got him hot. As triple well, whammy, we? straight off it. Yeah. Hot off the market. Yeah, yeah. Look. Tell us about it. Wow. So if we rush over the motorbike side, then, um, <laughs> <laughs> then we'll no, the yeah, exactly. Yeah, getting the juicy gossip. No, the, the bike side's been good, and it? it's been a good start. Um, been a mega start to the year. But it's weird because I sort of say start and we're already five rounds in, ain't we, you know? Um, I just, a little bit of a slow burn. I've just been keeping my feet on the ground, keeping a bit quiet. And I said to the team after Knock Hill, I said, like, you know, we, we were strong at Knock Hill. And I was like, I think now is the time I'm just going to force the, the, the um, what's the word, like, you know, force the the process a little bit more. Um in snap was that really it was nice to get a triple i must be honest i've been trying for for years now and it's one of them things like i want to become british champion but also you it's nice to tick off that first triple so yeah credit to the credit to the team it's it's weird because i always allude to like poker doing it doing like uh, winning a race when you've now got like two and then three races if you win the first race you've showed your hand so everyone knows what you've got so you then got to think right i need to change my bike um because if i don't change my bike they're going to know what to expect in the next one or i got to do this i've got to do that and snap was the opposite snap was like do you know what bike's amazing let's just roll and just roll every lap with every race we we changed the bike minimal amount but the beauty of it was is the situation in the scenarios of how the race is planned out were very different so it allowed me to almost fox them a little bit and uh, yeah it was nice nice to get the triple win and um just extend the points lead really yeah that's the main thing isn't it do you think the um season feels a little bit like it's only just getting going because of the way pre-season sort of went eh, it's weird isn't it because um I feel worn out already. <laughs> like now we're only five rounds in. Yeah. No, it's it, the, you know like it's like everything racing that the the mental strain makes a massive impact. Um, just everything out of racing, it's like everyone says, "Oh, racing, racing, racing," but it's the out of racing that I find more difficult. I find it you have to go training if you want to succeed. You have to go training. And then I'll wake up so exhausted because it's like the other day, this is the more, more uh, um, what's the word, the more uh, interesting conversation. It's the other, podcast it got, but yeah, <laughs> but it's like the other day, I was like, ah, oh, I better go training. So, so Tuesday, I normally train Monday, Tuesday, and then, and then I'll recover then leading up. And I was like, oh, fuck, I've got to get my JCB done on Tuesday. So I couldn't train Tuesday. <laughs> I should have trained, really. But I had to do the wheel bearings because the wheel was about to drop off. Anyway, that was all day. And if you imagine a big JCB telehandler, 
the wheel then fell on me and I was like, fucking hell. I was like stuck in my workshop with this wheel half on me thinking, and I got blisters everywhere. I was going to say the bad with them, but I got blisters everywhere, cuts up my hand, there was blood everywhere. And I was like, oh, fucking hell, this ain't going well. So then I had to train Wednesday instead. But that's the hard bit. The training is a hard bit. I used to love it. I used to be really full on triathlons and da, da, da. as you get older, it gets a little bit more of a chore. So I now do my training. I'll train minimum once a day, but I just do enough to allow me to be what I need to. Instead, I don't need to. It's like a, it's like a runner. If you're in a if you're a hundred meter runner, you don't need to train uh, for a, a marathon, do you? You wouldn't do it. Whereas at the minute, I my races in British Superbikes are X long, so I know if I can double my race distance with my trainers. So if my races are 35 minutes, if I double that at a high level, then I know within that race distance I'll be fine and should recover. But yeah, season's been going all right though, hasn't it? You've you've had worse seasons. Yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, do you know what? I've had a I've had a good touch wood. I've had a good run for a number of years, really. Um in 2019 was obviously where well 2018 was when i joined motor rapido um and i can remember i was in japan and it all went to shit it just racing was just really tough you know just a slippery slope of going the wrong way um in 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 the respects of my effort in in my work ethic has always been the same but sometimes you don't get the opportunity and just by chance it just worked out that i was in suzuka I was doing the Suzuka eight hour test for Suzuki um, and it was brilliant riding well out there. And then I, I can remember the time difference and I, my phone pinged up. I don't know if it was Stuart Higgs or, or someone saying, um, get on the phone to Will from Motor Rapido. I was like, oh, what's going on there? And then I see obviously that, that um, Taylor it, it, in Wilf, it, it sort of split. And then I can remember meeting Wilf in 18, at the end of 18, and it was like, look, this is just a one weekend trial period. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. I said, trust me, you won't want to get rid of me. And he's like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. We just really need a rider at the minute. I was like, nah, that's fine. Anyway, four odd years down the line, to be fair, um, he actually says to me like, oh, you're nowhere near as bad as what people actually make out. I'm just very passionate. I'm very passionate about success. Um, and if the team have the same ethic then you're all on the same page. It's when it's when people start thinking they're better, i.e. me as a rider, I'm better than the team. I'm not. Without that team, you'll know when you, you can't succeed, you know. So yeah, it was a it was a good good partnership with me and Wilf. And then in truth, we mutually just said yeah, for this year, look, um I'm quite a believer that you can stay a little bit stagnant in the same environment. And obviously with having four years with the team that I didn't, we didn't get stagnant by any way, shape or form, but uh, I felt it was good for them to have a new, new sort of faces. Um, and it was good for me to, to take that next step for better or for worse, you know, in truth. But yeah, no, so it's been good, hasn't it? Yeah. I, I love these chats because um, you're almost like asking yourself questions and then you go on and talk about yeah. another element which is mint because we can just listen to you talk oh, all day just, no don't when i start let, i don't start but that, it's it's you. it's yeah. proper cool and i and i love i had i've got so many questions just off what you've said there which is annoying because it's like fuck stop i want to ask now that yeah, yeah, yeah. But, just tell me to but shut it's up. brilliant no it's brilliant and um i think just recapping on that a little bit um which was cool to hear you about your training side of things because people fucking take it out of control, yeah. don't they? And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who probably think they're professional cyclists or professional, tri you know, triathletes, these sorts of things, mm. but they're not. They're professional motorcycle riders yes. and yeah. that's what they got to do. So that's cool to see how you've changed that. And I think looking back at it a little bit, it's interesting seeing how your career sort of developed. Um I mean, you've been around the game long enough. Uh, you know, I've been over here for a while now. And when I first got over here, um, Tommy Bridewell was a, it was a big name. Yeah, um, wow. But you were kind of, you were in between a few teams. Yeah. You're a bit of a journeyman. You know, you're yeah. there, but you're kind of not the, the boy. Yes. And then Motor Rapido came along um, and you really established yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And that's where, to be fair to Will, that's where... And obviously now you're riding for him, but you'll 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 find that it's a nice sort of steady, strong environment, you know, um, with with 
Baz and Joe, obviously, I know Baz isn't there anymore, but Joe is, is obviously one of my mechanics back then as well. And the bike never missed a beat. Great, great guys, you know, um, really good guys. So, and that's what you need to, to build. And like you say, with racing, with, with, sorry, with, with training, the only th reason I changed it, because I soon realized that me cycling 100 miles a day or running a marathon a day didn't make me any more prepared. I Everything in this game is all uh, what's in your head. Mm. You know, everything is what's in your head. So I also know that if I am being lazy and I think, oh, I can't be bothered to train today, mentally it destroys me so i know that whatever i need to do for my brain mentally I, I didn't need to train on wednesday but i can remember laying in bed uh at like half six in the morning thinking oh, no I, I need to just get get in go swimming this morning and if i didn't go swimming it would have it would have dragged me down all day mm. um so training for me is just purely for mental you know, if you said to me, right, let's go and run a marathon now, running, I'm all right. If you said, right, let's go and cycle 100 miles, I'd be like, yeah, yeah good, great chat, mate. Yeah, kiss yeah, my ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unless I can ride my electric bike. But yeah. um, you've got to do stuff that... Because that's going to take away from the goal, which is yeah. being fresh tomorrow, two, two yeah. long free practices, yeah. doing lots of laps. Yeah, it's what you want to achieve. Let me put that on silent. Is that, <laughs> that ping going to drive you mad, wouldn't it? Um, you, know, you know these naked forfeits we were talking about yeah, when you walk yeah, through the door? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. one of them. Trust me, that's Stacey. And <laughs> Stacey keeps texting me saying, you down your underwear, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Is it time to come in? <laughs> yeah, I'm watching live. Podcast yeah. is only just going to get going. Yeah, it? We yeah. could have unlocked a whole new side of podcasting. Yeah, there. oh yeah. Could do start, some like start swinging podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could enough. commentate while shagging, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you did something like that, I mean, I'd be as as the host. Yeah. You know, I just get to sit and the voyeur. Wow. No, I'm just watching. Correct. All right. Okay, I'm watching. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy with with what I have, as we all are. Yeah. As we all are. However, is that a performance related <laughs> worry, or is that <laughs> when you lot are watching? Yeah. yeah. In my physique and my my oh, physical so. nature, don't I don't start talking about so. shagging because then that will be. I'll be freaking gone then. Yeah. Oh, no, no yeah. but we, we know people who know people that only fans. Oh really? Yeah. So we could get an OnlyFans spot. This is going downhill rapidly. Only we could to get bake on OnlyFans. It's not to just bake. Just, yeah, it's not just a porn. Site. Yeah, they like wank off bananas with their feet and stuff, don't they? Basically, yeah, and yeah. Oh, There's all, weird. Though, you can it? think of the weirdest thing possible, and there is every chance it will be on OnlyFans. I don't know. So I, I can think of some weird <laughs> things, mind. Very weird things. What's the weirdest thing you can think oh, of? Oh, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to put it on the podcast. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely wouldn't. You said talk about anything, but not. No, I, I know. I can't. I thought of that then, and I thought you definitely couldn't put it on podcast. I should ask you, really, but I can't because trust me, you wouldn't well, be able to. Cut it out. So just no, just you can't. We no, could make can't. cut it out. We could make it a real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad that it's all. Almost like, and you can only ask people it when you're, you're like thinking about it so hard. I know, I feel like, fuck, I'm like, shut up, fuck, it, because I'm gonna ask. Like, yeah. No, 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 no. We do, we're doing the Tommy thing, keep him talking because eventually, yeah, it's gonna exactly, come out. yeah, exactly. He says it, no, but I no, if not. we ever want to do an OnlyFans podcast, then yeah, the, the guys at American Racing who were backed by OnlyFans, yeah, because that's because Hopper is he, he invested into OnlyFans, didn't he? I, well, that's what I, I believe, believe so, yeah. Did he? I yeah, I think there's something. Either, yeah, it's yeah. either him or Etan who is the team owner. Right. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was one of them that I think invested I'm so, into. Sorry it. if I'm moving. Like I feel like I'm 12 years old. Like yeah. I, I can't touch the ground. Like you know, what I, mean? I feel so uncomfortable. Back. I don't know whether to sit like this, <laughs> sit like this, yeah. sit here, but then I'm blocking the camera. It's talking so. about OnlyFans and swinging. You're <laughs> yeah. getting all excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, He's starting to get a bit sweaty yeah, down exactly, the bottom end, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Um. One thing. One last question on the race until later on. Yeah. The one thing that the biggest question that I would like to ask you, compared to all the other seasons, there's something different about you this year, and I can't quite put my finger on it. What's changed? Um, uh, ch genuinely, nothing's changed for me. Um, but I, I did make a comment before the season started uh, that I wanted a bit more pressure on my shoulders. I wanted a bit more expectation. Um, it absolutely loved, like, you know, Mert Rapido and that, but I was probably a, a, a bit too negative for my own self, really, because um, I'm never happy with second. I'm never happy with third. 
uh, and I felt bad because I used to drag them them down a bit, you know, because we finished second, we finished third. They should be ecstatic. And I'd come in furious um, and they would be happy. And I'm like, oh, why are you happy? You know, whereas as much as now I'm happy if I finish second or third, my expectation is to win. Um, and maybe that expectation, that added pressure is perhaps what's what's ignited um that bit i needed i guess but but nothing's changed like every every day you know i do the same stuff we've got a bit of land and the you know like the maintenance of it it, it keeps me going um and it's nothing's changed i was doing the same previously it's just maybe in red i don't know is their expectation is the, the beauty i had joining pbm is is i'm a win-win I was already already at a win win. Do I do I join them when when Scott is just won the championship? Um, I have to win. You you have to win. Whereas obviously they've had a tough couple of years. Uh, so for for me joining them then, I was at a win win because I was top Ducati before that and and still able to 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 be able to say that as such. So a long winded answer to your question is nothing's changed, but. I do need and still do need to probably believe in my own ability a little bit more, a little bit more, because sometimes I do not doubt myself because I know how strong I am and I can be, but it, you've got to believe in yourself a bit more on a more regular basis. And I think I think as soon as I start believing in myself a bit more, I can go the next step again. And that's really like it's snap. Um I can remember like a, a, a real inside scoop. I can remember um, being in race one, riding around, did it, felt good, saved me tyre, sat there, no problem. And then Glenn come past me um, and really put the hammer down. And I was like, oh, bloody hell, okay. Oh, he's got some pace here. And really made me work hard, really made me work hard. And I can remember saying to myself, um, coming into the, in one of the, the, you got Agostini's and then left there. And I swear a lot anyway, and I was like, like, fucking no matter what, I'm winning this race, no matter what, like, you know, um, and I know I made a comment with Eurosport about it, and, and it, it, it is fact, it's true, what I said is what I, is what I am, um, you, but you just got to believe in that, you, you know, it's so easy to go, fuck, I'm on the limit, ah, second, you know, I was on the limit, but I was second, but there's always... Somehow there's always a little bit more. It, it, you know, it's fact. I don't know how, but in somehow, somehow you are always on the limit. But when you're, it's like I allude back to 2000. In, when was I with Supersonic? 2012. I can remember back then it, here at Brands Arch, a fast lap time was like, would it have been 27s or something like that? And I can remember I hadn't finished on the podium all year. I was chasing Tommy in the last lap of the race. I did a 126.4. Now, if you put in a brand new set of tyres, um, you I couldn't do that with new tyres. So why have I been able to do it with old tyres? Same person, same bike, bar, bar, bar my tyres are fucked. But you ride somehow and you carry the momentum and you, 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 you know, I... When I ride, normally, there is nothing in my head. Like, some some riders perhaps ride with stuff in their head. They might be thinking more. They might, I don't know, might have distractions or whatever. But honest to God, there is nothing in my head. But then I know nothing bar motorbikes. Like, you know, I'm, I, it, sometimes it, it, it upsets me how stupid I can be. Because I'm like, I wish I knew a bit more. Like, about the world. About the world, really. And I'm like, fucking hell, I just... Just motorbikes. That is it. You must know a fair bit because you you not you don't eat lamb now. <laughs> wow, yeah, but it's only because of bullshit. So, <laughs> it's only because of bullshit. So you're obviously jumping on the fucking bandwagon. Yeah, I'll be a vegan <laughs> next one. <laughs> <or not>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go up Stonehenge on. I drive past Stonehenge on the way here, and I'm gonna go and kiss the stones and hug them and stuff. <laughs> Do you know? Jokes aside, um, they they obviously like they're hippies, isn't they? Like you know, um, don't have tax, don't have MOT, don't pay any tax whatever anyway they they have orgies 
fact uh, on in device back on this yeah show, back to shagging say <laughs> oh, shagging obsessed <laughs> yeah. no they do <laughs> my uncle bless him god rest him he, uh he, uncle gory he went up um on ranway hill and devices because eight years ago when the summer solstice used to happen they used to all get up on ranway hill get stoned out their bloody head in just an absolute free for all, <laughs> like a bloody, like a lucky dip, I suppose. Were there. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. unlucky. Next, but no, um, yeah. So anyway, that was that. Look. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm taking mental notes, and I'm yeah. thinking, I reckon I could be your therapist. And I'd I, fucking, I, I, I'd I, mentally scar you. No, 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 no. no I tell you what, because exactly you, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, when you get talking, so good to listen to, but you're almost um, you almost answered a couple of like my c- questions while you you talk because you said the big one was what's changed. You all said nothing's changed, but I think a lot's changed in the sense between your ears. Yeah, you almost got to the point now where right, it's PBM. If I'm not doing it now, I'm yeah. never fucking doing it. 100%. So, there yeah. you go. There's a change. Mentally. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of little mental changes by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, that Hence why I said being your therapist. I just think that subconsciously has happened. Yeah. Um, you may be unaware of it. You probably are aware of it. But I think it's added up to this great thing this year where yeah. you've got- You've you've had the solid years, man. You've nearly yeah. won a couple of championships. You've been solid. Um. But now, like that race at that that race at Snet, where I know you, know, it's if people that probably listen think, oh, that's cocky, and you know, I'm um, there's no, it's easy to say now, sat on the couch, there's no way I'm losing that race. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is, you were fastest guy all weekend. Mm. You had the momentum. You were leading the race, and you, Glenn, like no disrespect to Glenn, he'd been nowhere. Yeah, up yeah. until that point. So when he'd come past you on the same bike as you, mm. knowing what you'd know, because you know a lot more than we know, because you sat next to him in yeah. the garage, you've gone no fucking chances, <laughs> yeah. no well, chances he beaten me. Yeah. And then you've gone and beat him. Yeah, but you've gone and beaten three times. You beat everyone three times. So I think. I think there's a lot. There's a lot in yeah. that. There's yeah. a lot in that. I do. I do agree with you because, like you say, I, I genuinely. Um, I understand a bit about like your subconscious in in all that sort of stuff. In like you say, sometimes you're not aware of what's changed. In in sometimes you are, um, but uh, for me, it's just that that relaxed environment with um, with that pressure. Like I joked, I joked to my team that I hate morning warm up. It's like nine o'clock, nine thirty, and I'm like, oh, I'm half asleep. I hate it. Whereas it's snare. Um, I actually topped morning warm up, and and it wasn't because I wanted to. It was just the ball was rolling, and you got to keep it rolling as such. So, yeah, maybe them all them like you say all them little things add up, in in that is perhaps what makes that big that bigger effect towards the end of it. For me, I agree with that completely, and especially with what you said. Looking from the outside in, there's an air of confidence about you that we've seen all season that we've maybe not seen before. That you mm. may, you've had it, yeah. But you've not been able to show it. Well, actually, that's what I was, I was almost when you when Ben said about it then. Um, it's it's a bit like when I won with Motor Rapido uh, at Alton Park. Won both races on a Sunday. Um, and Just fucked like, off, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and people were like, well, "Why can't you do that next weekend?" And I'm like. I don't know how I did it that weekend. Mm. You know, I don't know. I, don't- I, I was just about to say this. You were saying what, you know, I think this year, you th- on your bad days, you're third. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're there where you, you're not ninth. You're no. just not this random ninth place. That's it. You go yeah. and win two races on the Sunday. Sunday yeah, yeah, yeah. In that, in, in honesty, that is genuinely, like I say, probably where the biggest changes come because... I could win both races at Alton, um, and is that because it's Alton and I've had great success there, and I'm confident and I know I can win there? But when I when I rode off, for example, in one of the races, I literally <laughs> rode away from him. I was doing 34 flat, 34 flat, 34 flat, 34 flat, 30, and I was like, it's not even hard. And I, <laughs> I don't like say again, I don't say it in a cocky way, but I was riding with self confidence probably without realizing and just literally flowing, and then looking at my pit bull going plus eight thinking <laughs> i wish they were all like this yeah. but then the next week the, and this is what's always always hampered my championship because in truth in 2021 it was down to me and taz um and obviously taz you know got me uh at the end but really what done the damage was donnington because um 
we had momentum on him. We we were fast in him because obviously the showdown always was in practice. I don't know if it still is, but was I think it was like Alton, Donington, and then Brands. Um, Alton, we were we were a lot stronger, you know, miles miles ahead. But then Donington, I I was beaten in some degree before I got there because the bike notoriously is not very good there. I'm not always the biggest fan of Donington. Um, so I was like, oh, this is going to be such a hard weekend. I love this place, you know, so we bounced back this. But the damage was done, you know. By that stage, he had, he had put a 30-point lead into me and that's it, game over. And I think, like you say, going in back to this year, I think that's the difference where I've gone to Silverstone thinking it's not a good circuit for Ducati, but still finished on the podium all three races. Donington, oh, it's not a great circuit for Ducati, but fought two for now right to the end for the race win in every race you know um arguably we probably would have won the second race because Carl crashed but obviously we had a mechanical so but all them little things adds up to con you know your confidence building and building and building to then go right like i said going back going right now it's net i believe in myself i know i've got the bike now let's do it you know and i can now tell you how i won them races whereas previously i couldn't have told you so well, that's a let's have a brief. That's an that's, a, <laughs> that's an absolute golden feeling. Isn't yeah. It? When when you decide right, yeah. Time to light the candle now. Yes. The bike's where I want it to be. I'm feeling good. All the chips line. We come to a good circuit. Let's fucking go. Yeah. 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 And then to, yeah. then to go home with three first places. Well, you, that's yeah. what dreams are made of. Yeah. You can't write that. I shit. chucked all the other second place trophies out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck off, rubbish. <laughs> no, but I think you also got to remember nowadays in in any category really but yes in in super sport in super bike in in super stock thousand you do really need to appreciate the 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 podiums you know because honestly if your podium in in any of the categories really you don't again as a racer all you want to do is win but you also need to appreciate that a podium nowadays is is a Fuck it, takes some doing, you know, it takes some doing. And super bikes is getting stronger, super sport, super stock thousand, all these categories are, are full of fast riders, you know, young, older, all of them. So like look look at BSB, you got Haslam is I think is he 40, 41 now? 40. 40, 40 yeah. And I think is Josh 40 now? I think yeah, he was 40 this. 40, aren't they? Are they? I think yeah. I heard something on the uh, commentary combined age of 80 it was quick <laughs> <mask. laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know me times table or me but alphabet there's a, there's a lot of experience isn't there yeah there's a lot of experience in all the class like yeah in my class for instance like i've spent a fair few years there i've gone to world championship come back luke stableford he's a former yes. champion yeah, yeah. tom booth amos he's racing regularly at the yeah. front of world super sport and over here yeah so there's there's depth in all of it in in, in the, across the exactly, board of course it is lynn foot's look, now in it's, super stock that's super stock down Billy McConnell, Alex Olsen, you know, I watch it and I hear all these guys and you think, fuck it now, like, you know. They bars them. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, oh, I wouldn't want to do stock thou and I wouldn't want to do super sport and I'll tell you what, I'll just stick to super bike because that's what I know. I've, I've genuinely, since 07, um, when obviously we I lost Ollie, luckily enough for me, I was uh, Tony G, who was the owner of um, the team then, basically said to me, look, I'll support you for as long as you want wherever you want to go. Um, and I can remember ringing him saying, look, into that, I think it was like end of 07. I was like, do you know what? I want a fresh environment. Let's go and do the Italian super bikes. And it's the best thing I've done because you travel, you you see different faces. No one's going to me. Oh, sorry about this. It was just such good environment. Loved it. Um, and it's them sort of experiences that, that build you as a character, build you as a racer in, in all of it. And no different to you coming over here. The commitment you've had to make same with Brooksy, same with all the guys that do it. We, we're British, so we don't, you know, I, I, this is where I live as such, you know, but you guys have made the commitment to, to follow your dreams, you know, and that, and that is fact, isn't it? Mm. So, and that's the commitment. It's like going back to training. It's not always about who can run 100 miles and who can only run 90 miles. If you're that committed, then it, it, it will pay off. It, it's fact. And it's like everyone goes back to, you know, um, hard work will always out uh, outdo talent or whatever. Like you know, so if you can mix a bit of both, that's where you've got your best combination, aren't you? 
Yeah, I think like touching on that bit, we're, us guys, we travel across the world. We literally leave our whole family, friends, everything. Lady tax invaders. <laughs> <laughs> everything we know, we, we leave it back there. And um, I actually think people go, oh, it must be so hard. But I actually find it a little bit of an advantage yeah. because of what you said there. It's like every day that we're over here, we get reminded while we're here. Yeah. And yeah. so- if you don't want to do it, you just fuck go home. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when you're fair way into your career and you're like, I'm still loving, like I'm grinding. But I'm, when you're washing cars in the car wash, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, I'm on the bones of my ass, but <laughs> no, nah, I'm absolutely loving it. And um, I think that's a little bit of an advantage because I live and breathe it every day. However, that the tough bit would be on your off days. You'd yeah. love to just drive home with your old man or your mum. Yeah. Just get, get away get from away, the racing, yeah. but you're you're stuck in your own thoughts. It, obviously, I've got a, you know my wife now over here. Um, we've grown together over here, which yeah. helps. But that's probably a tough bit. I think it's a little bit of an advantage sometimes mm. if you use it well at the track. Yes, because it's like yeah. you know why you're here. This is why we're here. Yeah, I've come all this way. I'm fucking taking this opportunity. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, and you got to. You got to because if you don't, the next person will. So that's where you've got to maximise. It just every walk in life, you know, every walk in life. Like I, I, I could be the most hated person if I actually spoke a lot of my mind. Um, unfortunately, because I'm not. A ma- I listen to the news and I watch it, and I'm like, oh fucking hell, they're on strike again, and he's on strike, and so this, basically, like- Wilf on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's just it's hard. The way the world is now is 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 very. Um, if you're a very happy person the world can soon drag you down mm. and i think that i'm you a up. very happy person because i appreciate for everything we've we've got we've worked for and so on but it's like that happy person it then meets the the person that hates to see someone happy and they'll soon drag that person out. it's like fucking hell it just hey yes that's just the world we live in in it unfortunately mm-hmm it's no thank you mate um yeah it it is it's it's a hard world to be positive in yes with so much shit going on scrolling through social media somebody's always got an opinion on something and we get it from time to time like why are you always smiling yeah because i don't give a fuck yeah yeah i don't care i don't owe anybody anything especially in the paddock i can walk around i can talk to anybody it's like do you know what i don't care no no, no. I just want to be happy. I'm not, not going to be here forever. And, and, and I, I get on really well with Steve Rogers. And it's kind of like, um, obviously, we, me and Jason had that little coming together at Alton last Did you? year. Yeah. Yeah. He I turned miss, in on me. I miss, I, miss, <laughs> yeah. I, miss, I miss that. What yeah, happened? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, it, it, I'm, I'm for, the, for the team I'm riding for, I'm all in, full on, like, you know. And I said to Steve, look, Steve, I think you're an absolute great bloke. But remember this, that I'm not here for you. I'm not here for anyone else but to succeed for my team and me. So unfortunately, yes, you're on the wrong side of that right now. But I fucking don't really care, you know, because that is the only way to succeed. You can't, you can't like, I've never had friends in racing, you know, and I don't, it's not because I I don't want friends. It's just a fact of when I ride out of pits, I don't need to say sorry to anyone. If I sit them up, if I hold them up, if I run wide or whatever, I'm just like a lone ranger. The only person I, I sort of probably was closest to was, and if you, you're going, I'm going to make you listen, Martin Jessup. Um, <laughs> Jessup was, but luckily for me, he was uh, he was just never a, a threat, to be honest. So, um, <laughs> horrible. I know, exactly horrible. He used to text me actually saying, what time are you leaving pit? Like, honestly, what time are you leaving pit lane? And I'll be like, X amount after the green flag, let's say. Next minute, I roll out of pits and you hear him, whoa, whoa, come tearing out behind me. The amount he used to follow me. Anyway, about half a lap later, he was dis- he disappeared because he, he, couldn't couldn't he, couldn't, he couldn't keep up. Yeah, His tongue was in the spokes. He had too many ciders at, too many ciders at night. Yeah. Well, this is what he said before like, about Snetterton. He's like, if I have to ride through somebody, yeah. like, that's what I'm going to do. And yeah. that's that confidence thing again. Yeah, You've it, never come out with that before. You, I wouldn't. I, I say yeah I, I wouldn't purposely yeah, disclaimer everybody yeah exactly not yeah. literally for yeah. god's sake no but I, yeah no put your comments in yeah, and tell him he's a dickhead because yeah. it helps it below. it helps the algorithm yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um, unfortunately I don't use Facebook bar Facebook marketplace uh, Stacey my wife does a lot of it um, and she's like mm, better hide that comment and hide that one and hide that one and hide that one and I'm like Stacey I don't care like you know because the day I worry about that is, you know, I just don't. But I do 
want people to realize that i would never ride for anyone because i'm also the most aware person that the sport we do is so dangerous so i don't want to see any rider injured especially if i've helped cause that so i would never ever be able to live with myself um it's just probably like say a bit of confidence in me going i can take on the world i'll ride through anyone you wouldn't (laughs) (laughs) just on a completely separate note what happened with you and Tito at Snatterton? He turned in on me. <laughs> uh, what did I miss? What did I miss? I hit him, didn't I? Did you take him out? No, 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 no I nearly. Oh. <laughs> coming out of the bomb hole. Uh, into it. Coming in. Yeah, yeah. Bomb. Yeah, yeah. Bomb. You bomb. In the, going into the bomb hole. Yeah. You, you yeah. tell us about it. Yeah. It, uh, do you know what it was? He went down the back straight, went left in the chicane and then right, but then like, almost had a big moment and i and, and was wide and he'd, he'd lost all his drive and i also had a perfect like clean line and i know that if someone comes out there and loses all their drive and you get a perfect drive just and just about you can oh, nearly, shit, i remember now that was massive yeah, yeah, yeah you can nearly nearly get them you can at least because i pass i pass glenn there like you know in, in one of the races so it is doable um but two-wheel drift yeah exactly <laughs> well that's what the team said to me after they went oh i think i think tommy you must have had a problem because when you turn in for some reason the rear locked up and i was like oh yeah i had a problem definitely yeah. <laughs> and then about yeah, 10 minutes one. 10 minutes later james my electronics technician come up and went mm, actually i can see it was probably the 25 bar of rear brake pressure you pulled because it was panic like, stations it was literally like i thought i was fully committed and i thought that's fine i'll get past him and then all of a sudden he didn't have as big a moment as i anticipated in my head that he was having and um he just underestimated Tito. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You thought, right, I'll have him. Yeah, no. um, anyway, yeah, that was, fuck, that was close. Very close. I thought we were down. I must be honest. I had three massive, massive moments at Snet, all in the races. Two were thanks to your teammate, actually. One was my own fault. He nearly hit Tito. Or did hit Tito. And then uh, second one, obviously i wasn't i must have been invincible or invisible if the word is um because christian pretty much rode straight through the side of me and literally lifted the front wheel off the bike and i was like fuck that was so close luckily i dropped enough time that by the time i had re-caught him i had calmed down enough and then the <laughs> yeah. third time let him off <laughs> yeah exactly the third time uh i went into turn one off the line good start turn in absolutely perfect sat in and then whack and i was like Fuck, it literally ripped the arm, the, uh, my elbow slider off my leathers. You're fucking teammate again. <laughs> and I was like, he has one big vendetta against me. So I, I couldn't let him off for that one. So I did have to sit him up into the left hander. Um, so yeah. I, I, <laughs> sorry, not yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm moaning at you for that now, actually. Yeah. So, oh, I'll have a chat to him tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So go harder next time. Like, <laughs> Basically, Tommy called you a dickhead yeah, last dick, night. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. mega. Fair play to Tito. He kept it pinned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, he had a go. He, he I, I, I he thought that was quite. Off. It's quite cool actually because it, it, it does show the caliber of rider there. Yeah. To not just panic and just like not roll, like sit up, roll out of it. I did feel sorry. <laughs> I did feel sorry for him, believe it or not, because it kind of started a chain of um, piranhas, and it's like racing is like as soon as you smell blood everyone pounces and it's like i hit him and he ran wide and the next minute someone else has lunged him and someone else and before you know it's, it's like oh where's rebat gone probably in a safer place actually like almost. <laughs> but, um, no he did a good job to be fair he did a very good job because coming into any championship no matter who you are is never easy is it you know so um yeah to be fair to him he, he, he did do good i was having a, a long chat with dan linfoot earlier and you've raced against dan over the years you know he's a bloody good rider yes yeah couple of iffy seasons coming back now into stock thousand and into national super stock, yeah. stock for yeah. and now he's winning races he's got that same air of confidence that you have mm. he's enjoying his racing he's moving forward with it but we were talking about bsb and when we were talking about um who would take the mccam's ride and people throw in charlie nesbitt's name forward and storm stacy's mm. name forward, they're not ready no they're great young yeah, riders yeah. But I think what a lot of fans maybe don't realise. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's also yeah, there's also that side of it as well that they're contracted till the end of the season. But just how difficult running at the front of the British Superbike mm. Championship is because that experience. Yeah. The lads that are 
30 plus yeah have been yeah. around they know what they're doing you can't just and walk straight into that you know the weight of expectation for as well riding for one of them teams is um as a young rider there's your time that's your your golden opportunity to to <clears throat> to shine you know to to get to get everyone to go wow bloody hell this kid's fast Unfortunately, a lot nine times out of the ten, it does the opposite. You know, they'll go out there, they'll go right. I've got to maximise this opportunity, um, and then crash, smash the bike all to pieces, and then one weekend done, their names kind of tarnished, and a lot of the top teams go, mm, no, no, we 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 give that a miss. So you look exactly like you say. You've got to. It's got to be the time has got to be right. You know, confidence. Um, ability riding ability you know perhaps age and <clears throat> i know there was a comment made i think um previous uh, in the past i can't remember he made it but basically saying that there's not enough younger up-and-coming riders that are able to let's say step into my place so if i if i turn around at the end of this year and go right i'm british superbike champion i that's what i wanted to do now i'm retiring done um who who can replace me um and I'm not saying it's me. I'm maybe maybe we we'll talk about someone else who can replace Jason O'Holloran, for example. And it's difficult for McCam's, let's say Yamaha, to find that replacement that can do the same job what Jason can do to tick the boxes for sponsors. Because we also all need to remember that this is a business. This is a corporate, you know, McCam's Yamaha, let's say, uh, paying to, for, to promote, you know, the advertisement. So is Beer Monster is, is our, you know, PBM's total sponsor. So um, we need to showcase them in the, the best possible at the very highest level. And it's, it's difficult to find the riders to be able to do that. And, and perhaps that's where Grand Prix is great at the minute because of, um, unfortunately, you probably got so many young talent coming up, but not enough seats seats in 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 um in the in the so i was gonna say super bikes but that's one other thing again probably boring on motorbike side of it but i wish i absolutely wish um and it, it never happened it fucking pisses me off actually but i wish world super bikes and british super bikes would uh have a, a stronger collaboration because i would be pushing my team to for now to be doing two or three world super white wild cards every year 100 percent, like you know because i love imola i watch imola and i'm like oh fuck, you know i could do so well there i race that exactly and honestly i can't describe to you how good it is you've ever rode there ben no nah, oh. it was off the calendar last year i watch i was the same as you drooling oh, honestly all over the couch unbelievable unbelievable track it's like the only way to describe it is a faster Alton Park on steroids, wide, wider, bit safer. Um, fuck, amazing. But I'd be saying to the team, like, you know, please, can we do it? You know, but I'd probably push him to, well, I'd have it almost in my contract to say, look, I'd do BSB, X amount of rounds, but also in the contract will be two rounds of World Superbikes. You'd do the British round because it's British round, and then I'd do Imola, basically. Imola um, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, wherever I felt I could do the best, really. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I wish, I wish that would happen. And it's something I've always said to Stuart Higgs. But honestly, it, obviously, where I'm with uh, PBM now, I, in in my um, crew chief, Paolo is from Ducati Factory. I can see what Bautista's spec is. I can see how it rides. All the usual in the electronics on their bike is there's a waste of time me doing a, a wild card because honestly, if that's Ducati's electronic system that's better than their grand prix system and um, because grand prix is more controlled where all super bikes is basically open the the technology is unbelievable you can't compete against it you physically can't compete against it so yeah there's no point in doing it wasting tires fuel money expense to to do it so yeah uh we're getting on with the time a little bit but i was just want to say with the age thing um there's a lot of that there's a lot of concentration on young guys at the moment because of MotoGP, I think, personally. Yes. But I'm starting to see a little bit of a trend in superbikes where MotoGP, Moto2, Moto3 is pretty sewn up with the way they move their riders through there. There's yeah. young Grand Prix champions. Yeah. They're winning week in, week out. They're proper professionals. The guys that maybe just haven't quite cut it are getting thrown back into World Superbike. Yeah. So what you're seeing is you're seeing the the average age in World Superbike a little bit higher than maybe um, previous years. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But then you look at Superbike because it's all got a big 
it's got a big chain of, of events and opportunities. The best super bi- British superbike guys want to go to World Superbike, but there's no... Are you starting to see maybe the the average age in British superbikes being a lot higher too? Yeah. yeah and may, maybe even being the golden age of yeah. 34 yeah. to 40? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, why not? It's always been that, hasn't it? Experience, yeah. Yeah. 10 years. know yeah. how to win championships, yeah. know how to be there every week, yeah. not crashing, not, you know, getting injured. Yeah. yeah. No, and it's a hundred percent like you say. There's almost like it's weird because it's like it's like a pyramid, really. Um, there's a, a, a ladder where you can build up to, let's say, Grand Prix, but really for British riders, it's quite difficult now. Nationality is a big thing, and it's hard. We can see with Jake, like you know, phenomenal rider, but look how hard he's had to work in sacrifice to be able to do that, and it's worth it, hundred percent. But sometimes it's right place, right time, right manager. Um, You've got to tick them boxes, and if all if, if all the stars align, then then brilliant. But with that pyramid effect, let's say, is on the downside is the Grand Prix MotoGP riders, let's say rumours of Morbidelli, Giantonio, probably younger lad, but all these guys now potentially rumoured to go to World Superbike, which then go right. Um, Loris Baz rumoured, and all these other riders are going right. Well, we're now go to British Superbikes. Um, so the pyramid goes up, but also it comes back down in the respects of there's such amazing racing at the bottom, but both sides of this pyramid, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking mm. of it in my head and it's both sides of how the racing's still amazing and it only strengthens the championships. But where the shit part of it is, is, is the younger riders coming through stock 600, stock 1000 to then get into super bikes. That's where it's hard because... For them guys, they're building in in Britain to go step one, step two. Right now, I'm in Superbike, but that Superbike team that they wanted to ride for is actually now going to sign Loris Baz, for example, who's on that pyramid coming down. Um, but he ticks more boxes. You know, there's a, an instant result, 100%. So then this lad who was building and building, how does he get to that point? You know, I don't really know. I don't know what the answer is in truth, but bar bar a lucky break you know and that is where sometimes sponsorship um unfortunately nowadays is a big factor in it you know bringing money to the team is is a big factor with with racing now um so yeah it, there's like you say you could go on for hours about it in in genuinely there's behind the scenes that that the viewers perhaps wouldn't know or see is there's so much more that goes into it so when you see uh they've signed x y and z riders you think why have they done that or da 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 but there's reason you know there's a lot of speculation of will Ducati keep Rinaldi um I don't know for a fact but from what I'm led to believe or understand previously that uh Michael Ruben Rinaldi is is very very favorable with Aruba so if Aruba is your team's total sponsor Will they be saying, well, look, you can have Bautista or have whoever you want, but we want Ronaldo. So the the fans on the outside don't see that and don't know that. And um, when we're all going, we'll put him on the bike or put put me on the bike, for example. But then I can't bring uh, half a million pound or half a million euro sponsor. So uh, only 450. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> let it snow. And I'm like, oh, doesn't sound yeah. like you, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what? The Matilda one that's on Netflix. Is that um that not is it Dwayne Johnson? Is he is he Matilda? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I don't think so. We've been watching a really good one on NFL players. Oh, what okay, about, yeah. What yeah, about? Yeah. It? yeah, I yeah. think I have I, seen some. About I wish you didn't get us started on that now because yeah. we're we're fucked now for the next <laughs> oh, half hour. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> there you go. <laughs> Everybody listening to knows Kirsty. She just said Tommy's like her. They don't yeah, shut exactly, up. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> I got something. Just um, you. T- <laughs> so that means you've heard about uh, probably. Yeah, <laughs> I get on Facebook Marketplace and I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh look at that field sprayer that go on the back of my <laughs> tractor. Lovely because I got a Massey Ferguson fifty six ten. I <laughs> yeah, rude boy. Um, honestly, love it. I drive it on the road because it's on red. It's on red diesel, so I drive it on the road as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but anyway yeah it's a little bit of kit what's he do it's got a 40 40k box in it so i do 40 plus k 43 kilometers an hour flat out but <laughs> i'm not joking you i'm in the bank i'm nearly hitting the cars everywhere um anyway so the clarkson in it oh, it's like, yeah going yeah, it is lane, it's, it's honestly terrible like. but i um i bought this sprayer 
Anyway, fucking hell. Cut a long story short. Um, I sprayed the field. Hopefully, the parish council and my neighbours aren't listening to this because <laughs> they're because I'm admitting to to um, spraying my field. Anyway, <laughs> I, they they can't prove what I sprayed it with. Sprayed the field. There might have been a little bit of drift with the wind. I don't know. Um, and it, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, this is a friend of mine actually, <laughs> and. Um, there was a little bit of scorch on some of the tree leaves. Oh. No damage caused. No. no damage caused. Anyway, next minute, phone Killed goes. About four <laughs> <birds>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, honestly, no damage was. But I don't was eat done. lamb. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> no damage was done. Definitely, a hundred percent. I will just get that over there, um, because I know what the world's like. But phone goes on the web to knock ill. Uh, I can't. Was it NPCC or whoever? I was just Mr. Bride. I was like, yeah, speaking. This is NPCC. Uh, we're ringing you uh, from a, uh, a complaint about you killing all of the trees uh, in Spin Hill. And I was like, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> and they went, uh, do you have a bit of field? And I was like, mm. it depends who's asking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, again, going on, long story. <laughs> That basically they were they were as good as gold. I explained to them what happened. They were like, "No, that's absolutely fine. You're not a business. I'm not a business. I'm not a farming business. Um, so I don't technically need or have to have the the spraying licenses because that's what they were trying to do me." But my neighbours dislike me quite a lot. Um, so instead of going, oh, "Okay, well, there's nothing we can do," phone goes. This is Mr. Bride. I'm like, "Fucking hell, <laughs> who's asking?" <laughs> this is uh, PC. Da 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 da. And I was like. Fuck's sake. She said, the woman, she said, um, do you know why we're phoning? And I went, could be a number of things, love. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, she started giggling. And I was like, oh, she's all right. She Anyway, so they had only then reported me to the bloody police. And I was like, fucking hell. I literally sprayed the foot. This is like just a daily thing you you speak to larry carter this is like i can remember, you probably remember when ollie used to do his columns in motorcycle racer and this is just people forget what we are like um I suppose nowadays it's a little bit more quieter because, again, the way the world is. But so the police rang me. I was like, look, I explained to him what happened. She was as good as gold. She said, look, I've got to give you a bit of a stern telling off. Please take these words on advice. Uh, take these words on in, in, in a bit of advice. And I was like, that's fine. I said, oh, shall I go around and um, apologize to who I know made the complaint? Because I thought if I can get her to say, um, oh, yeah, I'd advise her. I know her fact that it was them that complained against me and i thought i got it black and white and now just plant lando trees at the end of their garden <laughs> um job done problem solved and Spray the <laughs> exactly yeah do you know going back to it though what what made so me laugh learn from a stern telling <laughs> exactly <off. laughs> yeah exactly yeah makes me worse but going back to it what really made me laugh is uh the report was to the police that i sprayed the field but I've, ha I've got a handheld lance and I was spraying um, the handheld lance over top of my head like a lunatic. And I said to the policewoman, I said, if you can tell me why I would spray myself in a pesticide weed killer, I said, then your guess is as fucking good as mine, basically. So anyway, yeah, that's just a daily, a daily thing. It's just relentless. It is. <laughs> what it, what the problem is, I sound an asshole and I, I know I keep going on because I want to fight my case. Um, that we, camera there, Tom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Before yeah. you go any further, I, you, yeah. you are fucked. I tell you what. Because, <laughs> exactly, yeah. because this podcast yeah. is going to be on the internet and they're going to use this for evidence. Evidence, yeah. <laughs> and then when you explained your... Why I can't make the last round no, when I'm in prison, no, it's because of you no, two. No, when you explained your tractor, what it was, and you're like... <laughs> They're oh, gonna no. picture you with pesticide over your like head. Spraying like a lunatic. <laughs> Come on, I'm fucking spraying, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought champagne, but um, I, I will. I will say that um, when we bought the plot, it was a barn with a maize field. So the neighbours have for 15 years been used to that. No activity bar cutting the maize once a year. Whatever job done, and then I move in get planned permission to build a house, build the house, get planned permission to build two sort of uh, agricultural barns um, and then get planned permission to build some stables. So in, because the way I am, I'm so fast in a hundred mile an hour that one of my neighbours has openly admitted that what upsets them is that they go to work one day, they come back and there's like fucking 10 stables built. There's a four it's, bed detached yeah, house. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Looking it straight in their bedroom window. Yeah. No one's been consulted. No, no one's been there, nothing. Yeah. But where I was silly at the start, I was like, ah, don't worry about that. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Um, and yeah, that's the way I do it. 
<laughs> it's easier to get for all of you. It's easier to get retrospective planning than it is outright planning. One hundred percent. So um, you know, the, you know, the <laughs> I know the gesture, yeah. and it's funny because I won't name him, no, but but um, the the pl- uh, enforcement officer for, <laughs> for Wiltshire, I won't name him, but he is a big bike fan. So when he comes out and he's like, "Oh, Tom, you just can't." do this and i'm like sorry mate but i have <laughs> and he's like oh fuck like, how can i explain this he said you can't you've got a i've just built a mini bike track and he's like you just can't do that and i'm like too late mate it's built you know <laughs> but he always comments like if i have a good weekend race and he's on facebook stacy is saying he's like always commenting going oh amazing weekend tom good job and i if my neighbors that mini bike track. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> if my neighbors knew they'd be like see uh, you know conflict of interest or something wouldn't it but um yeah do you have do you have um a lot of feeling for jeremy clarkson do you, when, you, when you watch when you oh, watch yeah. that program, you're, you're almost living it and breathing it oh, yourself yes. that's mad yeah that's yeah a lot of similarity he's you know what he's like obviously he's a big a list of celebrity i guess in 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 each uh, uh, what is good that he done with obviously the the clarkson's farm is it does it does show um just show that farm is hard you know farm is not that viable but and this is all the farmers are probably hate me saying this there is loopholes you know i um i've got a, a 12 acre field Biggest yeah. loophole. Yeah, I'm exactly. non-for-profit. Yeah, exactly. I'm not running a business. <laughs> yeah, but it's like... And I've only got 12 acres. So I've got a land agent. So then my land agent basically says to me, because I would advise to get a land agent because they know the loopholes of all. He's like, rings me. He says, oh, Tom, um, do you want a £25,000 or whatever it was grant to plant a hedge around your uh, your field? And I was like, well, sounds all right to me, yeah. Well, how much is a hedge you're going to cost? Six grand. And I'm like, so you're 19 grand technically but obviously then you've got to pay someone to plant it but i can plant it myself so if i want to do the work i haven't put the hedge up um because i ain't got time but if i if you want to that's where these little loopholes are hence why farmers have set aside or have x amount grazing and so on and so on but yeah it's um when you see the way clarkson carries on as mad yeah, I just got you make 13 grand by planting a hedge no 19 isn't it 19 25 grand less grand. than six Less of six. Oh, 25. Bloody how mass went your strong point, was it? Yeah. I'm getting it. Babe, get on yeah. fucking trip. Let's get us exactly, a farm. Yeah. We're getting a farm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's probably... It's not a business. Yeah. You can make money from planting hedges. Yeah. But it, and that's where it is. It's odd. It's like um, the, the sprayer I bought off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I went there, picked that. Lovely, lovely old... Um, like a bloke he was in 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 his wife and it had a spectacular house right up over top of bath it was unbelievable and i was like Fuh. so how do you manage to get planning permission here and he went um goats and alpacas and i was like really anyway so she was a counselor so she used to work for the council and she said oh yeah she said alpacas need that much attention you have to be on hand 24 7 so they have to give you some form of um like living whether it be static caravan once a static caravan's there for so long you can then put in plan for mission for a house and so on anyway so many so many things so anyone that's trying to get planning there is um there is loopholes with it <laughs> yeah brilliant. yeah it, it was whip that told me about you oh was it oh yeah <laughs> mouth almighty wet <laughs> get me right in this shit so you, you'd sold you sold him a, a fairly decent horse box i think he was telling me last week no i got a, i got his daughter a horse didn't oh, I? it was the horse not that's, the horse yeah box. it was ruby the horse that was yeah it. so shaky come up to me and said oh can you do me a favor um wit's daughter who works for eurosport had a deal with the director of eurosport that if they can get me back on before the show before the the show ends or whatever it snap he'll buy her a horse <laughs> so i was like oh okay I'm fine yeah no worries so i go up do it do do my bit in that as that and um i said to her i said you, you do know this horse is probably gonna have fucking three legs or something so probably gonna cost you more in vet bills than it will be to have a free horse so uh, yeah no it's um all fun and games the joys it? of what goes on behind the scenes right we we gonna we're starting a new little um section in this podcast we started it with linfort earlier on you didn't run it by me no 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 you're part of this mate you're going to enjoy (laughs) this we have a random number generator yeah we have a list of questions that can be fixed as well no it can't it's a random generator general general i'll show you that can't can it because i watch all these fixed i watch these auctions and i'm like no oh come on can't you just fix me to win this one we we can't fix this at all so we have one to 23 
one to 23 on Look, the random generator. So Ella, and the first one is 15. 15. Okay, so we'll go with... Uh, ah, okay. We'll go for you first and then yeah. I'll throw it to you so you get a bit of time to think about it. What's the best? Loads, what's the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, I thought you said complaint. Compl no, compliment. Oh yeah, complaint. Uh, Fucking hell, yeah. <laughs> I think we've covered a compliment. few of them. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's not a great question because, to be honest, it's like it's hard, isn't it? Really, compliment. Yeah, yeah there's not really that people. You're well done, let's say, but no, you don't nowadays. Uh, women don't come up saying, "Can you sign me tete anymore?" Like you know, where That's a shame. in the olden days, it almost seemed to be when you was younger. Yeah, when you was younger. Yeah, <laughs> get me a pen quick. <laughs> no, one get, in the back. <laughs> you'd almost think like that was like the this rock star Barry Sheen kind of era. Um, but no, unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Oh, what about you? I don't know. Um, signed a few tits in your time <laughs> <laughs> yeah only a couple um, yeah. more babies heads now isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think that, I don't know I think one of my mates once said to me after about 10 beers in Benidorm said fuck you're sexy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and only then, in yeah. Benidorm so it? yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I must yeah. be pretty sexy yeah. <laughs> what do you got two number two what's the best advice you were given but didn't take Oh, yeah, okay. I, I can go straight to this one, really, because it still rings in my head a little bit. Um, the best advice I was given was don't do a lot of things all right. Do one thing really fucking good and concentrate on that before you... Don't try and do everything, basically, overnight. Do one thing, do it well, then look to expand. So, just sort of like because of like business and racing racing is not going to be the only form of income so you start start to concentrate on trying to make businesses and make a dollar you start to not focus on your racing your racing goes downhill da, 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 mm. and that's kind of it's like a double-edged sword a little bit so yeah that's that's probably the best advice i've had like yeah it. it's Tom? probably similar to be fair this is better I, it back in 2020 i uh, um with covid and everything you, you, the racing was so delayed um because we didn't know if we was going racing or we didn't blah, blah, blah. anyway cut long story short we me and my wife bought a rent um a renovation property um and it just overtook like because i was doing everything myself and it just overpowered life overpowered life and, and, it, and it impacted my racing in 2020 and made me realize that you know to do you just need to really focus ben uh, and agree uh, will agree that um I quite often take a step back now and look at the younger generation and think, fuck, I feel like I could help so many people, so many people, even in my category, going back, like you say, Charlie Nez, but whoever, I feel like there's so many things I could say to them, just, just help them, you know? Um, the problem is, just you say one thing next minute, they're beating you, are like, fuck, oh, should have said that. <laughs> yeah, so Keep your powder dry on wait, that one. Just wait a few more years. <laughs> I think it's a bit, I've gone a bit off topic, but I think... Sorry. You, you kind of got to learn for yourself a lot of the time in this world. Yeah. The advice goes in, you don't implement it straight away until it slaps you clean in the face okay. and you go, oh, fuck, I can remember hell. when they said that. Yeah, That's yeah. right. And then you'll not make that mistake again. No. So you, you learn in the process that you're learning, I think, yeah. with the people that you've got around you and the, what you, you know, the tools that you've got in front of you. So no, I think it's everyone learns at their own pace. Yeah. That's deep. I like that. Yeah. We're doing some good shit tonight. This is Content, good. Man. This is the number 14 beeps. on this one because we've got two sections to oh, it. No, we don't beep it. No, that's good. Never. Then. No, we're not doing any of that. Beep, beep, beep. Three dinner party guests, alive uh, or dead. Who are you going to invite? Oh, um, alive or dead. Well, they'd, they'd be alive. Um, well, yeah, they're not much fun. But if you could bring, <laughs> if, if you could, yeah. anybody through history, whatever. It's hard because sometimes, weirdly, you ask that question. I've actually thought of it previously. And you, this, every time you come up with a different answer because you're like well actually if we were here you could da, da, da. i think marquez would be good fun it almost trying to keep it a little bit on a part of a bike note i think marquez would be good fun but i think top rack would be good fun as well and um, probably the three of us would be fatal in truth but um <laughs> i'm not a big a-lister celebrity so when you th i i all i want to do is have fun um so then could you go for them some big a-lister celebrity some sexy bird or whatever 
um yes yeah well yeah <laughs> but would it be fun probably not like you know conversation would be dry you wouldn't it like <laughs> where, did you see um the f1 guy who um what's his name do you know what i mean who does a com the grid walking oh uh, martin brundle and he went up to that that woman um is it yeah yeah and, and she was and he, he said something about oh, i'm sure the conversation would have been uh interesting anyway and i was like oh <laughs> fucking brilliant and i think that was that martin was probably, Rundle. That's that's it, yeah. 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 um yeah and i think that would kind of be one of them you'd want people there that has the same interest because like i said previously i'm so full on with motorbikes if i then said oh, i want um super duper singer um then be a bit boring you got really. nothing in common yeah yeah like Barry Sheen and Liam Gallagher yeah well yeah yeah perhaps yeah yeah so yeah I, I was gonna say two others and I thought fucking hell I can't say that no I can't no I can't Jimmy get... Savile or something I knew it I knew it you can't say that dirty bastard yeah but you just want to know what makes him tick oh you? fucking he was hell. my third guy yeah. <laughs> now I really don't want to know no, no, no. I might have to beep that section <laughs> fucking hell yeah is it that ba- yeah I suppose it is that no, bad isn't it? Um, my first one would be no exactly my, my first one would be Elon Musk I just, I'd love to just it, dude fascinates me um, second guy I don't know. I didn't get past Elon Musk, to be honest. But I, I would like I would like to go like Marquez and that. But I feel... Do you know what? I'm opposite to you. I, I don't want to sit down and, and talk to motorbike riders because it's it's what we do. Like, I'm I'm yeah. not that interested as like what... You know, they I, obviously they've got things to talk about that would be awesome. But I want to ask like Elon Musk about rockets and what, what he's building on Mars. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And then, I don't know, maybe jeremy clarkson because i'd love i love his series and i'd yeah. like to talk to him about his farming and do you actually farm or do you just make a tv show yeah. do you know I mean? things like that the third one would probably be who oh, who what oh miley cyrus just because yeah maybe yeah. i'll maybe i'll get half an hour to try and convince her to marry me or join our thruple i said <laughs> i said i said to I said Kirsty, if miley cyrus walked into our life now and she was happy to be in a thruple would you be okay with that and and then before she answered I said, you'd, have, somewhere. you'd have to be okay with it otherwise you're out the door yeah you know exactly I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> so there's one like, answer to this love yeah <laughs> so yeah that's, that's a new a, word for me tonight what thruple yeah I tell you, who is sexy. Is that Nicole Schurzwinger? Ain't she? <laughs> yeah, she's pretty, really, really pretty. Yeah, oh, God. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because Hamilton, Hamilton was dating. He was there. Yeah. yeah, he's been there. Would you get? Uh, Jen, Jen, she's Jen's really Jen's favorite. Jen. And who's that other? Um, who's that other girl? Who's, uh, is it? I feel like Rihanna's pretty as well. Rihanna's all right. Yeah, yeah. Swinger, Yeah. <laughs> Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood. Don't know who that is. Je- uh, Jennifer Anderson. I saw a right. photo of her. I think it was photoshopped, <laughs> but she had this white top on and erect nipples. We've and lost like, all our female v- listeners. Yeah, right? I'm sorry about that. That is so. We were um, just starting to build about like three percent. You two chauvinistic pigs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but oh, that's roast the leaf. Is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, there is. Yeah, no, yeah. we we yeah. do appreciate beautiful women on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. We're, we we're all married. Yeah, happily. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might as well be. Yeah. yeah. We well, may as well get it we done may then. As well be. Oh, 10. Number oh, 10. Oh, no. Number 10. Okay. Should we make this the last one? It's half, nearly half eight, 20 yeah, past yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the last thing you did for the first time? The last thing I did for the first time. Fuck you now, yeah. You need that. Ooh, that's, that's brilliant. Um, do you know what? I'd, you're gonna have to ask <laughs> answer, ask these questions to her. Can you think of yours? Um, the last thing I did for the first time was I did. Uh, this isn't a, a plug, but it can be a plug um, because it was actually an amazing, amazing event. Is uh, Palmer John? Obviously, MSVR Jonathan Palmer has uh, what they call Palmer Sport, um, and I was invited with the team to go and do this uh, Hager event. <laughs> and honest to God, motorbikes excites me and cars not so much. But the Palmer Sport Day, you get to drive cars as fast as you can with no care in the world. If you smash a car up, if you blow it up, if you do whatever. Um, 
that was a brilliant day. Like, yeah, Bedford like your dream. Like, you're driving M4s so fast that it's like, fucking how? How can they allow you to do this you, you do these experience days and it's like we've power. rumbled so many people on this podcast yeah. man. No. that's now being shut down as we speak yeah exactly <laughs> no. it's an MSV place yeah no it's MSV it's oh, amazing yeah. honestly it. alright there you go it's so good I would never normally say it on these car days because I've never done any any else but um fuck brilliant really good fun and uh, in a hell of a kick I, I ended up in the gravel obviously <laughs> in one of the single seater like the f3 cars they were like go on faster faster because you have the earpiece in and i was like fucking i'm gonna bend the thing in half i'm trying to hit this fifth gear corner that fast i was like it's impossible and then went in the gravel so yeah oh, like, um I, I know mine she yeah yeah, yeah it's, uh, i had a nice english tea breakfast tea if you never had an english what? tea no. before what no. was it pg tips yorkshire tea or yorkshire <laughs> beautiful yorkshire tea yeah so do you have any sugar with it miss, nah just just a little bit of splash of milk in there wait was it oh yeah almond milk almond. Oh. oh oat milk oh, oh, oh fuck, fuck. You yeah no i don't have milk do i so oh, I but it was all right it, was, it wasn't no, right. i'm a coffee guy so that that's kind of why yeah that's what like i had the tea i was like fuck tea did yeah. you like it or not to be honest with you i wanted a hot like a I was sitting in on the lounge room at like nine o'clock. Like thinking, latching onto the tip, bitty. <laughs> more, more. <laughs> no, yeah. I was actually clucking bitty, bitty. for a hot drink. I was like, I just want to sit here now and have a coffee, but I can't have a coffee at nine o'clock. She's like, have a tea. And I was like, nah, fuck that. I Trouble hate is, tea. Is you drinking out one of them babies and... Sippy cup tea. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. That's, I was going to say something. It's completely gone because it doesn't matter now. What's the, uh, the, the next one? Have you done it? No. Uh, number seven. What's the one thing you can't live without? Ooh. I'd be boring in saying motorbikes, um, but I would struggle. I would struggle. Um, and then the the correct thing is to say, obviously, my wife. Um, but, but them two aside, <laughs> um, if, if you take all the factors of, water or food or da 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 what would i struggle to live without um i would struggle to live without probably just freedom in some degree i know it sounds mad i'd hate to have to go to prison um because i'm i i love being on my own like genuinely love being on my own um Whereas I, like Stacey say to me quite often, like she, say, I, she says like, what I love about you is you so, you can be so independent. If I wanted to go on holiday on my own, it wouldn't worry me. I like my own company. Um, I love obviously spending time with, with Stacey and with my family and all that. But yeah, freedom of just being free, like a bird, you know. Yeah. Do you know what? He's, yeah, he's nailed it. Apart from like your, your essentials, water, food, yeah. for the, for the sake of the show um yeah i would say for me probably actually i would say my phone because i'm i'm over here that's my, my i can ring my mum and dad any time of the day facetime audio you know i remember when mum moved to australia all them years because my mum's german um and i was born in germany um, so i'm over uh, that's how i got here quite easily with a european passport um yeah and i remember her going to the old payphone putting money in the uh, payphone ringing her mum you know she all the way on the other side. There's a big thing like that, that many years ago. Uh, we're talking what, probably thirty years ago, um, and then running out of fucking coins. <laughs> Bosh. The That's it. And then another week. I think she could only do it once a week or something. The way she where she walked to or whatever it was. And uh, I'm thinking, oh. yeah, I can talk a fair bit. Really? I can understand yeah. more than I can speak. Talk, yeah. I need a, like a bit of time over there to get going again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah, shit house. house. Oh, is it? <laughs> sort of fits like that more often then. Oh, yeah, shows an house and fits hand in hand with this Almost podcast, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, you girt shit house. Get out of the way. <laughs> nah, it's been, to be honest with you, I'll, it's been mega chatting to yeah. you. I do appreciate it. Um, no, do you mind? Question. Last, last question. Dave just will not let this fucking. No, no, no. What's the last question we ask? Because this is Tom's first time. Oh, okay. 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 So, first. Um, Shag one, kill one, marry one. <laughs> wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong question. Wrong question. Sorry. Next time. That's next question. Sorry. That's after the, the podcast. Last question we always ever do. Yeah. Um, what's your best hire car story? My what? Your best hire car story. Oh, um, 
trouble is it normally ends up on my credit card so i'm like fucking in the middle of the road going, <laughs> um but i can remember uh when we were out in spain and it i wasn't in the car but my brother was in the car with um when we were with Vivaldi back when well, naturally best it was back then um and I've never quite understood the, the destroying of a hire car. But anyway, I can remember Ollie telling me that they were, he wasn't driving. Um, one of the mechanics was. And he went down the motorway in fifth gear um, and just rammed it into reverse. Oh, disintegrated lovely. the gearbox and, and obviously fucked the engine. And then the stupid thing is, is they were then stranded on the side of the road for fucking two hours waiting to get picked up. Um the only other one was me, Hutchie, and Brooksy were it when we rode for Yamaha. We're going along, and Brooksy's like, "Oh, let's do a handbrake," and I'm like, "We're on 120. I don't know what. Not even wouldn't be miles an hour. Like it was, it was fucking batting on." And the next minute, he yanks the handbrake up, and I'm like, Aah! in the middle of the motor, and I'm like, "You fucking idiot!" And the dozy twat. The fucking worst thing about it was for the next five days every trip we'd done was because it just flat spotted the tyres so, you know and I was like this is your fault you dick there's this weird aura about motorcycle riders when they go to Spain they think they're invincible yes so in a car in, in a car yeah it's like rules don't apply we can yeah. speed we can do whatever we want it don't matter because there's no repercussions yeah let's fuck this car as well <laughs> yeah. just, just to top it off yeah on the way back you know what no. I mean like I I've never understood it myself oh no I've never I, I do the odd wheel spin or whatever but I can't say I can I remember watching Plater um, coming out of Cartagena when I was in 125 days in this car. Oh my God, was wheel spinning for miles, for miles. And I'm thinking, fuck. But it was it was probably a bit more normal back then, wasn't it? So nowadays you, you seem to, when you go and get your hire car, it's like, do you want the full insurance? Now you're all right. Are you sure? <laughs> I fucking go on then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has it got a scratch? <laughs> no, I go on. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> This this has been fantastic, Tommy. Thank you so yeah, much. No, my really pleasure. Thanks for time. thanks for the invite, thank guys. You. And thank you, Ben no, no and Kirsty and Jennifer at the back as well. It's been a fantastic chat. We'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Best of luck for the week. And good luck for this weekend. What's you what what are we saying prediction wise? Quickly. Prediction wise, quickly. Um, I want to win all three races. All three, baby. I want. Nice I, I want. I, six on the trot. Oh yeah, bro. Fucking playing in permission, my ass. We'll build yeah. a. We'll yeah. build a fucking skyscraper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it in. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet up. <laughs> break out the red panties. We're celebrating a night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Six on the Hang on, you said something about red underwear earlier as well. Is oh, this I, oh yes. Now we're, now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. I'm Shall not we leaving this you. motor home. <laughs> no, cheers, guys. Speak soon. Thanks, mate.